seen you guys all week long. I'm so glad we're here yeah. and in the presence of the Lord. Good to be here with you, my dear friends. Let's uh, let's open with another song. I'm going to sing a song and then we'll pray and invite everybody to uh, join us. Just, just, oh, give us one. I'm throwing Tony a curve right Yeah, here. give us one. I mean, give us somebody got a favorite. Somebody's got a favorite we want to open with. Who's got a very favorite? Just holler one out. Good win. <laughs> put you on the spot. I, I put people on the spot. Y'all better be ready. I know it. How about number uh, 125 in the red back? He keeps me singing. There's within my heart a melody. 125. 125, red back hymnal at the bottom of the page. We'll do the first and the fifth. 125. Father, thank you so much. You do keep us singing, Lord. 
That very name, Jesus, 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 Lord. That's what you've given me from the scriptures today, Lord. It was no accident we sang that song. Oh, it's a powerful name. It's a glorious name. It's the name that's above all names. Every knee bows, every tongue confesses that you are Lord Jesus. Jesus, we speak your name. Oh, I speak Jesus over every trial, over every situation, over every heartache, over everyone with a problem who has walked through this door. Maybe they don't understand what the solution is, but Lord Jesus, you have it. Lord Jesus, would you comfort your people today? Would you go, would you go with us, Lord? We are making the path straight for us, and I will worship you today for that. Lord Jesus, we speak your name over State of United Methodist Church. Lord, may your name be glorified here today, God. Let the word of God dwell richly in our hearts today. Lord, change us. Make us different when we leave here, Lord. Make us more like Jesus. Lord, we love you. We worship you in spirit and in truth. And we come to you as friends and family today, Lord, bowing before your throne. And we worship you in the name above all names, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm ready for church, y'all. Yeah. Yes, let's, let's, let's worship. 323 in the red book. 323.
when I saw Miss Ginger pick for you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, good, good to see you. You're walking good. Thank you. You're walking much good. better, aren't you? Yeah, I'm doing much better. Oh, Lord, it's so good. Good to see you this morning, Ginger. I'm so Let's glad to be here. Break. We'll take a little break and get our breath a little bit. And but don't don't take your breath too much because I want you to talk about Jesus. I want to hear about what God yeah. is doing in your lives. Y'all ready for the next song? I saw Angie opening the book. Should we go ahead and sing? Are y'all fired up? <laughs> we just winging it. We just winging yeah. it. We doing. Uh, I was in uh, 51. You read that, but I was doing since this is this is 911. Yep. You know, and I want to be one to thank God. Yeah. Course. Absolutely, we will. Let's let's pray first. Let's talk about what yeah. God is doing in our lives. Got several people we need to pray for already that I know about. Ann and Craig. Craig has the COVID. Again. Oh, no. Ann came in just a few minutes ago all masked up. She came and put her offering in the plate and said, we won't be here today because we're quarantining together. She got through it fine, and I'm, I'm praying and believing that Craig will as well. So uh, lots of people getting the COVID, but thankfully everybody I know is proceeding through it. They've got some good drugs for it now, and yeah. it's not near what it once was. So thank God for that. Of course, some people are still struggling with it. Let's all... Be aware of that and pray for folks. Who's got a uh, prayer request praise report today? I'm praying for Miss Beth. Miss Beth, Beth, absolutely. She's surrounded by it. Yes, she is. And they don't have a choice being around her. So pray for Miss Beth and Craig. And they're watching today. Craig and Miss Beth, we love you so much. Everybody say hey to them. Hey. <laughs> we love you very much. Chet Holiday's out there too. Say hello to Chet. He's watching. Hey, Sorry. hey Chet. I said last week I'm 99 percent sure Chet's watching it. He wrote me a text. I saw it before I got out of the church. He said, "You can be 100 percent sure that I'm watching." <laughs> so he loves his church. He has church right there in the cab of his of his big semi. So good to be here this morning with our internet audience. Miss Linda Aaron's there. Probably Dane and Jay Hill may be there. Where's Where's Mom today? I'll tell you about that. Okay, we're getting there. <laughs> okay. Several others. Nancy Nunn, a lady over at uh, Terabella that I love very much, watches us often. Um, Y'all think, think, think of others. I like to always make a good shout out to those folks. Uh, a friend of Ginger's of mine, Tony, uh, her, uh, her daughter had a beautiful baby girl yesterday. Uh, and her name, and her daughter is uh, Brooke and Manus. Brooke they, Yeah, they had a beautiful baby wonderful. girl. Wonderful. How wonderful. We praise the Lord for that. Um, who else has something to share? Bill and Terry. Bill and Terry, absolutely. Bill and Terry would be here if they could. They'd be sitting right there on that second row. Bill and Terry, we love you. I hope you're watching. I believe you probably are either now or later, so we love you. Mr. Morris is home with his back today, I believe, right? So we know about that back problem. I think about everybody in here could relate to that. So let's pray that God would give him some, some pain relief. He would just raise him up, raise his spirits. It's so easy to get down. When you can't move and everything hurts, yeah, and every time you twist, it hurts. But let's just pray for him right now that Jesus would just touch him, raise him up. Who else has a prayer request this morning? Mama, um, I just don't know she's 89. Her memory is not very really good. So I have to get her medicine out at night. She gets up an hour before I do. Because she's mama. And <laughs> she's already eat breakfast and say, Anyway, I lay her night medicine, give her her night medicine, lay her morning medicine out for her. Well, I've had to put her morning medicine in her room because my cats like to get things and mm -hmm. play shuffleboard with it. But anyway, this morning she got up, she took her morning medicine, and then she laid back down, got back up again right at 10 o'clock, and took didn't see her medicine, so she went and got it out of the thing, but she got the night medicine. Oh, no. So she's doubled up on her blood pressure medicine, mm -hmm. but at least it's three hours apart. But she's also taking her Repitarol, which is a restless leg that makes you sleep, mm -hmm. and melatonin. Oh. And so she's going to have a bad day. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to keep an eye on her blood pressure and stuff like that because she's, there's three blood pressure pills in there mm -hmm. that's taken all at once. Not at once. At least there was that three hour span yeah. right. in between. And breakfast, two breakfasts have been there. Oh, she forgot she got it. But anyway, okay. We need prayer for her. Mm -hmm. We need prayer for Janelle, I mean, Rock, uh, Joan and Larry coming home today uh, from Jack Island and their reunion. Um, and we need prayers for the festival next weekend. Yeah, that's yes. <laughs> Okay. 
certainly pray. You know, I'm just thinking when I was hearing you talk about Miss Lee, let, well, let's just pray the Lord will reverse that medicine. God is greater than medicine. And it will just turn into a restful day for her, just a nice day of rest and peace. She, she needs one. She, she does. Because she gets one. She gets, really works hard. God can reverse that medicine effect. And Lord, we just pray right now in Jesus' name that you touch Miss Willene, Lord, that you would reverse the effects of that over medication, under medication, whatever the case, that you would get her body perfectly back in balance, Lord, in Jesus' name. I just feel like the Lord wanted us to speak that out right now because she's laying there right now at home. You got somebody watching her? No. You want to be watching her as soon as you get home? Amen. I hope she's probably not watching us. She probably don't feel like it today, but she'll watch us later. Miss Willene, we're praying Jesus touch you right now. In his name we pray. Who else? Anyone? Everybody can be a little bit quiet today. A little bit quiet. Today's 9-11. And uh, dead on it, you know, sometimes we don't get right on it on Sunday. But today is 9-11, and it's always a sobering day. We all remember where we were the day it happened. We'll never, ever forget it. I just put it in the bullet. What can you say about that day? Just don't forget it. Let us never forget it. Talk to your grandchildren about it. Educate them. I always tell the kids on the bus, I'll tell them in the morning, y'all don't remember, y'all weren't born yet. But never forget what happened to this country on 9-11. Let it be a part of our permanent national memory. And let's thank God for those heroes that saved people's lives. Firemen that were going up the stairs while everybody else was coming down and gave their life for people, the first responders. And, and since that time, that awful war in Afghanistan, people who, who gave their lives. And it all started on 9-11. Everything changed, didn't it? Everything oh, changed yeah. that day. But you know what? God is still God. And God still has his plan. God's plan has never once been thwarted by man. But we uh, we live in a sinful, cursed world. He's called us to be light and salt and to speak his name, to speak the truth, and to pray that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's up to us. It's up to us to pray, to seek his face. And I'm so thankful we're in a church that believes that, a church that loves Jesus with all of our hearts. And we're not afraid to speak his name. Amen? Amen. Somebody say it with me. Jesus. 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 The name of Jesus. Amen. He's so good to us. One of my mentors in the ministry, I was listening to a message he preached just this week, and Brother Keith Moore, he said, just every day as you think about it, he said, just stop in your tracks and say, God, you've been so good to me. Yeah. Jesus, you are so good. You will have no idea what that will do for you. You can turn your day around. It can yeah. turn your life around. Just stop and say, you've been so good to me. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm preaching during prayer time. Let me stop and let you talk. Who else? On that note, today is my year 58th wedding anniversary. Oh, and so anniversary. just pray for any blessings on them today. And mm -hmm. I think mom will watch us sometime. So That's happy right. anniversary, mom and dad. Yeah. Miss Patsy Nation, she's watching today, I bet you. So happy birthday. We love y'all so much. You've been such a good <laughs> anniversary. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, anniversary. I got that all wrong. Yeah. But we love you so much. Thank you for watching and pray that you just have a wonderful, blessed day. Um, oh, I wanted to tell you, I was not playing on my phone while ago. That's a microphone, and I put it out there. It connects with this, and hopefully it'll let the people at home hear more of what you're saying, because I hear that they can't participate as much because they can't hear. So we'll see. I think it did pretty good last week. Michael, tell us what Ninos is doing today. Oh, she's designing a kitchen for Jennifer. For Jennifer. Y'all remember Jennifer? She came several times with us. Yeah, her house caught on fire. Oh, no. Uh, you know, it's because of cheaper architect option. <laughs> uh, so that, that's what she's doing today. The one that she just moved to? No, no, no. She, they've owned that house for 20 years and her husband, I call him the chef because it's not the first time that this has happened. And he left some grease on the stove and it caught the microwave on fire and then it just kept, kept, kept on going oh. and it burnt the kitchen up pretty good. But you know, uh, it's kind of a blessing in disguise. They get a whole new house, interior, all, all the appliances and furniture and clothes and new HVAC system. They get everything replaced. And they were okay? And everything they made it out. No animals died and they didn't Christ get did. sick. So oh, yeah, that's, Jesus. Thank yes. God. That's Thank God. Thing. Yes. Yeah. He's helping us. I tell you what, the Lord is helping us. She loves God and God is, uh, is helping us in everything that we do. Okay, y'all ready to do some praying? We'll just uh, take some time and just ask the Lord to touch our hearts and to make these prayer requests personal to us, all of our requests. And we'll let them be known to Him, and then I'll lead you in a pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll sing some more after that. In Jesus' name, let's, let's all just seek the Lord while He may be found. Call upon His name while He is near. 
Yes, Lord. If you want to thank Him, thank Him out loud where somebody can hear. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you've been so good to me. Yes, Lord. Oh, you've been so good to this church. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we just want to thank you. We want to love you. We want to worship you. Lord, it's so good to be in your house with your people. Lord, we worship all week long by the way we lead our lives. But God, there's a special dynamic that you release when two or more are gathered together in your name. You're right here, Lord. Oh, I sense your presence, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for never leaving us, never forsaking us. Lord, for always making the past great, even when we make mistakes, even when we go wrong, even when we uh, get off the path and into sin. Lord, you bring us back. Lord, you, you restore us. You give us vision. You give us hope. You give us peace. Oh, we praise you, Lord, and we worship you, Jesus Christ, Son of God. Lord, I ask for you to touch these requests today. Thank you for the privilege that we can bring them, Lord told us to come boldly. And Lord, we ask you today to touch Craig and Beth, Lord, at home, Lord. Craig, Beth, and Ann. Uh, Craig suffering with COVID now. Thank you for getting Ann through that, Lord. And God, through this exposure, I pray that Beth would be protected, Lord, because there's no there's no uh, quarantining her, Lord, in that house. And God, I just pray that you would protect her health, God, and her, since she's elderly, Lord, and she, she needs extra protection, Lord. I pray that you touch her, Lord, that you would just give her peace in her heart. Lord, I thank you for Ann and Craig and what they mean to our church, Lord, and we miss them when they're not here, but God, I pray you just touch them, bless them, build them up in their faith, give them peace, Lord, and I pray that they would be healed of this COVID in their household, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, um, I thank you for the new baby that Beverly told us about, her dear friends, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We always celebrate the birth of new babies. We love them, Lord. Thank you for the gifts that they are. Lord, for Bill and Terry, I ask you to touch them today, Lord. I feel like they're here with us, Lord, and their presence is here. We haven't seen them for some time, but God, I, if they're on the internet today, Lord, I pray that they would hear this, Lord, that you would build them up in their faith, Lord, that you would just, just uh, help them, God, and touch them and give them peace and joy and happiness, Lord. You would let them know that they are loved and you love them so much, and we miss them here at our church, Lord. Lord, for Nino, so she is working on this project to rebuild Jennifer's kitchen and her house, Lord, I pray that you give her creative ideas, Lord, give her artistic uh, finesse, Lord. I thank you that uh, Jennifer is going to proceed through this, uh, what could have been a tragedy, Lord, unscathed, God, because you protected her, her whole family, and Lord, she's going to have a house that's better than it was before. God, that's the way you work in the lives of believers. I thank you for that, Lord. I pray you continue to touch her, build her up in her, in her faith, God, through this process. Lord, for Miss Willene, Lord, we've already prayed once, but I speak it again, Lord. You are bigger than medicine, Lord. You are greater than any chemical or biological effects that pills will have on the body. Lord, I pray for a day of rest and peace and relaxation for her that her body would recalibrate itself when she uh, takes the appropriate dose of medicine, Lord. And I thank you, God, for medicine. I thank you for doctors, but you're the healer, Lord. Lord, we ask you to touch her, heal her in every way, Lord. I think about Tony. We didn't mention him today, God, but he's going through these treatments. God, you've already shown yourself so strong on his behalf, Lord, and we're looking for great things, Lord. You've got a plan. You've got a purpose for him. I see fire in that man's eyes, Lord. He is not ready to give up, God, and you are not ready to give him up. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing at Tony Chronic, Lord. I pray for every bit of cancer to leave his body in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I thank you for what you're doing in Ginger Victory, Lord. She walked in. Lord, if I hadn't known, she didn't even seem to be injured today, God, because she's She's progressing, Lord. You're healing her step by step. You're working on these little tendons and these bones that need to heal, Lord. And you're working through doctors. I thank you for that, Lord. And I bless her now. Lift her up, Lord Jesus. I pray that very soon her life would be back to better than normal. That there would be a new normal in her life. That she would be so blessed, God, that you would just pour out the blessings of heaven upon her. Lord, she's been through quite an ordeal. But, Lord, I bless her now in Jesus' name. Lord, for... Glenda and Misty, I see them back there, Lord. I know what Glenda goes through with her health, God, and I pray that you touch her, bless her, keep her in Jesus' name. Lord, the same for Pat, Lord. And Mr. Morris, Lord, I think about him today. He's at home with his back. God, I thank you, Lord, that you're touching us, you're helping us, God, and I pray that you bless him and raise him up, give him peace today. Lord, for my in-laws, Permanent Patsy Nation, Lord, I thank you for all those years they spent together, Lord, a wonderful example to younger folks who are just starting that journey, Lord. I pray that you bless them. Keep them, my father-in-law's in his own pulpit preaching now. I pray you would anoint him with the power of the gospel, Lord, the power of the Holy Spirit upon him right now. And Lord, bless my in-laws, I pray, Herman and Patsy, in Jesus' name, Lord. 
For a state of United Methodist Church, God, oh, you're giving us some work to do, Lord. You're giving us some creative ideas for ministry. Lord, some opportunities that we will walk into, Lord Jesus, as you give us resources, as you give us uh, vision, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing right here, God, in your people. Lord, and you're building your church strong. You're building your church deep, Lord. I pray that you would deepen our spiritual resources, Lord, that our roots would go deep, deep in you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name, Lord. We now pray as Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, glory to God. I always feel better after prayer. Are y'all ready to sing another song? Yes, Linda. Well, I didn't want to say nothing, but I thought I saw something here. Oh, my goodness. I, I, did, I, did, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry. No, you were probably going to tell me, and I didn't realize it. <laughs> Beverly, what happened? I fell in the parking lot down at General General Dollar General. Oh my goodness! My goodness! My goodness! My feet just got twisted. Are you? But you're you're okay. Did you yeah. go get checked out by the doctor? No. You didn't feel like it was necessary. No. Amy, come here. Would you annoy? I don't mean to put you on the spot. Would you annoy Beverly with a wall? I did not want to miss that. Thank you for letting me know. I probably just uh, got a little too quick there. <laughs> We don't ever want to miss a chance to play one of our own. Yeah, but she got her leg is really bad. Oh my too. goodness, ladies, gather around. No rash on her leg. Yeah. If you feel like, if you don't feel like coming up here, just stretch your hand for her. God knows. God, God knows. Yes. Lord Jesus, we just lift Beverly up before you right now in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray that you would reach out. Touch her body, Lord Jesus. Every um, muscle, every tissue, every bone, every ligament, every joint that has been bruised, made sore from this falling event. Lord God, I pray that you would heal it. Remove all inflammation in the name of Jesus. Cause her body to heal completely and totally, miraculously, quickly, Lord God. And I pray, Father, that you would give her stamina and strength, that you would steady her balance, Lord God. And God, I pray that you would encapsulate her with your healing power and your glory and lord may the spirit go before her around her preceding her and be a buffet around her to protect her yes. from any harm and danger lord god and i thank you for it in the name of jesus yes thank you amen and amen thank you angie thank you y'all turn to page 51 with me in light of uh, 9 11 and our thoughts on this day let's see Patriotic selection. 51 in the red back end.
couple of pages over. It's our tradition on 9 11 or the Sunday close to 9 11. Misty leads us in amazing grace. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. yeah. It's okay. It's yes. okay. We're right here with you. Yeah. You want to come up here with us? Yes. Okay. We're right here with you, sweetie. You don't have to be nervous at all. Have a microphone for her. You, fo we'll follow you, Missy. Though. Glenda, are you proud of this girl? Absolutely. I know you are. I'm so proud of her too. She leads us in worship. Absolutely. And she has a heart for Jesus. And she is such an inspiration to all of us, isn't she? Thank you, Miss. We got a song we'll sing for you, and I'll just put it. There we go. We got a song we just put together before church. It's an old song. I hadn't heard it in years, but I kept thinking about it as I was writing the sermon, and I said, I'm going to look that song up. It's called Coronation Day. And 
of it sometimes, but uh, the Lord helps us. Amen. Amen. Y'all ready to hear some preaching? Amen. I've got a new sermon series the Lord had put on my heart. I love this book. I love the Bible period. You know I love to preach and teach the Bible. And Ephesians, man, was that ever fun. I've missed it since we've been out there. Jude was good too. Jude was shorter. But I'm going back into a book this time. It's actually longer than Ephesians was. There's 13 chapters. I want to preach to you the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. I uh, when I was in seminary training, there were certain books that they would give you an entire class on just because of the theological implications, the theological depth. Others they would be, you know, a class on Genesis through Deuteronomy, the Pentateuch. There might be a class on the Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then there might be a class on the end times. But they had a particular course that you had to take just on the book of Hebrews, where we proceeded through there verse by verse, line by line. And oh, I had to read, I had to write, and I had to work myself to absorb this. And I'd read the Bible all of my life. You know, I've gone to Christian school and I was taught the Bible as an academic subject, but I had never truly visited the book of Hebrews and understood what it means in our Christian lives until then. And it has served me through the ministry through 25 years now Everywhere I look, everywhere I go, I hear these verses ringing out to me. That's why I want to teach them to you. I want to preach them to you. And I pray that God will use this time. It's probably going to go a couple of months. And we will go, maybe not verse by verse, but at least chapter by chapter, section by section. Hear what the Holy Spirit 
is saved in the church. I'm just going to preach the first four verses today of Hebrews chapter 1. Let me read that scripture to you to give us a context and a basis for our sermon today. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he also made the universe. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. Dear friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, help us, Lord. Oh, we need revelation knowledge. We need utterance, Lord. Let it be plain and simple so that we can apply this to our lives. Thank you for your word. We receive it gladly with joy today. In Jesus' name, amen. The book of Hebrews was written in Hebrew to a group of suffering, persecuted Jews. They were located somewhere we know outside of Israel, uh, just to the east, probably. A group for, that had been dispersed throughout that region. There's no references in the book to Gentiles. It's written specifically to Jews. The letter was written to Jewish believers and unbelievers to talk about the merits of Jesus Christ and how he is so much, so much superior to the old covenant, the old ways of sacrificing animals and pouring blood on the altar and having to repeat the same sacrifices over and over again. The book of Hebrews tells us that he is our high priest and he is done. The work is finished. The work is complete. Never again will a sacrifice have to be made because Jesus Christ, the righteous Son of God, poured His blood out as a red offering of remission for our sins. It's what we celebrate in communion when we talk about the blood that we receive, the blood of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. One time. He doesn't have to bleed again. No animal has to be slain again. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. Amen. The problem that way they were facing in Jerusalem was having uh, having both Jews and Gentiles not mentioned here. You know, 1 Peter, uh, Galatians, other 1 Corinthians, others talk about that clash of ideology between Jews and Gentiles not present here. He's speaking specifically to Hebrew people. The letter was written to reveal the merits of Jesus and the new covenant as opposed to the old covenant. It's an unusual and in-depth look at the old and the new covenant it's an unusual and particularly deep look at Jesus Christ, his attributes, and his work. We don't know who wrote it. A lot of people kind of assume that Paul wrote it, but it's really not like anything else that Paul ever wrote. A lot of people say that, well, maybe Paul was fluent in many languages, of course. Maybe Paul wrote it in Hebrew, knowing that it was going to Hebrew people. Then it got translated to Greek later by Luke or someone else who was an excellent translator. Could be. Other people have conjectured that it may have been Apollos who is mentioned as a wonderful preacher and writer in the scriptures. Other people have, have speculated other things, but ultimately it really doesn't matter because we understand the truth that is taught. I just call him the apostle to the Hebrews, whoever that may be. Paul, Apollos, whoever. That apostle was being motivated, being energized by the power of the Holy Spirit to explain these mysteries to us. And when we assimilate them into our lives, oh, dear friends, it will transform you. I have chewed on these truths for years, and I pray that it will transform your life as we discuss these things. I got some things in your bulletin. I'm going to use it as a roadmap, and I'm going to try to keep us all on track so that we can absorb these things. And if you want to take this for further study, it may be a good jumping off point for you. First point today that I want to speak to you about. Jesus is spoken. Jesus is spoken. He is the very language of God. It's interesting because in that passage that I just read, the Bible says in Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. God had been speaking since the creation of the world. God has always spoken to his people directly, indirectly, through prophets, through Abraham, through Moses, through Jacob, through Isaac, through all out through the ages, through John the Baptist. But in these final days, 
He calls them the last days. Interesting how Paul or the apostle of the Hebrews called this time, and Paul called this time the last days that he was in. We call this time that we're living in the last days. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago in June, how that throughout the centuries, Christians have always anticipated his coming. That's part of our DNA as Christians. That's part of who we are. We look for him every day. I wake up every day and I think this could be the day, but you know what? If it's not, I'm still I'm not going to do anything different. I want to get out there. I'm going to be like him. I want to do like him. I want him to pray through me. I want him to give through me. I want to be like Jesus every day more and more. I want to be more like him tomorrow than I was today. Isn't that our goal? Isn't that what he calls us to do? But we do believe that we're living in the last days. In these last days, the apostle says, he has spoken to us by his son. By his son. If you read that in the Greek language, and I have at times and done a bit of research there, there is no spoken to us in his son. It simply says, it simply reads, he has spoken to us in son, as if son were a language. And when we begin to read what he's saying here, that's exactly what he's trying to get across. It's about Jesus. The way that he has spoken to us is not just about Jesus. It's not just about a prophet. It's not just about a good man or a wonderful example or a religious icon or somebody that we put on stained glass windows or somebody that we adore or somebody that we uh, think about from the past and somebody that maybe is a great moral example. All of those things are true. But he is a language all of himself. The language of son. The language of Jesus. Jesus Christ, the righteous, mighty son of God. Co-eternal, co-existent, co-equal with God the Father. The th second person of the Trinity, dear friends. He was present from time immemorial. He was present and involved in creation. We're going to be talking about that in just a few moments. The very language that God has reached us with, with his mighty, mighty love, is Jesus. He needed no other word. No other language could speak like the name of Jesus. Can you think about that with me for a second? What would touch the heart of someone who lived in the days of the Apostle Paul? What would grip their heart? What would show them the greatest love they'd ever been shown? What would cause them to give their life? And that same language would cause me right here, 2022, to stand before you today and speak his name. What would cause you to get up early on a Sunday morning and gather together with a group of believers in his house and to speak his name, to love him, to honor him, to worship him? It's the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus, the anointed one, the Christ, the living one, the Son of God, not one who is buried in a tomb and memorialized, but one who is living, one who is active. He is seated at the right hand of God, dear friends. And the Bible guarantees that he will come again and receive us unto himself. That where he is, there we can be also. Boy, can you tell I'm getting a little bit happy today. Oh, I knew this was going to happen because I got happy when I was writing it. And I said, Lord, I hope the happy will continue because this is something to be happy about. Amen. Amen. Jesus, the name of Jesus. Jesus is the very language that God spoke. It's universal. It transcends all cultural. You can speak the name of Jesus to a person in the depths of communist China. And it will speak the same as it speaks to us right here in the state of Georgia. It doesn't matter about culture. It doesn't matter about divides. There's part of the world that's never heard his name, but when they hear it, they understand it because it's powerful. His name is power. His name is life. Jesus is God's complete and final revelation to man. Jesus was spoken. The Bible talks in John chapter 1 about the logos, the Greek word logos. In the beginning was the word. That word that's translated as word is called logos. Logos. The logos was a philosophical concept that had been a part of Greek philosophy for hundreds and thousands of years. The whole of humanity had looked for divine guidance, had sought and yearned for divine guidance from whatever created this earth, whatever created these things. The Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. You can look at the skies, you can look at the creation, and you have to ask yourself, who created this? That created a longing in all of mankind for the final word. There has to be an explanation. I can't explain the night sky. 
I can't explain how someone could navigate by the stars and, and sail 4,000 miles across an ocean simply by looking at the stars because of their continuity. I can't explain how things are visible that are billions of light years away from here. I can't explain the vastness of the universe. The things we've learned even in the past 20, 30 years through the Hubble telescope and different scientific endeavors are not explainable in any sort of human context or terms. But when we look to the Word of God, we understand that God framed the heavens and that Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, was intimately involved in creation and He remains involved in His creation. He is the Logos that John spoke of. And John was coming against a very particular heresy where people were saying, the Gnostics were beginning to say that Jesus was some divine emanation or he was tapped into some higher intelligence. Does that sound familiar at all? When you read some of these self-help books and when you read some of this pop psychology and some of this new age psychology, they're always talking about a higher intelligence. Oh, there's a, a something that we can tap into. No, dear friends, there's Jesus. There is Jesus Christ, the final one who was spoken by God. He is the one who loved you, the one who gave himself for you. He's not some higher intelligence. He has the Holy Spirit that will fill you and lead you into all truth. God has given us his final word in Jesus, the Logos, the living luminous word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him was all, all things were made that were made, and without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot, has not overcome it. In the New Testament, the Gospel of John begins, in the beginning was the Word. And if we look at the very beginning of the book, it alludes back to the very first part of Genesis. In the beginning... In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. Jesus was involved in creation. Let it be crystal clear, my dear church family, that the Word of God declares that Jesus is the final, complete, and perfect Word of the living God to mankind. There is no other Word. There is no other wisdom. There is no other higher intelligence. It's Jesus. Jesus, and He has revealed Himself through the Word of God. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is the one who will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He's the same one who stood outside of his friend's tomb, Lazarus, and he cried before he raised him to life because he felt the feelings of weakness. He was touched with every weakness that we feel, yet he was without sin. He went before us and he is now gone before us and he is seated at the right hand of God. And as we say in the Apostles' Creed, from thence, from there, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. Amen? Amen. 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 Jesus, 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 say his name with me. We're responsible for the truth that has been revealed to us. How do we respond to his lordship and his authority? You know, I've come to use his name more. I've talked about it a lot today. I thought about that. I said, that name is powerful. And sometimes we become a little bit religious and we kind of skirt around things and we don't walk in the privilege that we have, I believe. I find myself doing that. And Jesus becomes sort of a, a foreign, not unknown, but not an intimate part of my life. And I realize how short, how foolish I live when I don't understand that he is as close as the mention of his name. Oh, friends, over every situation, the situation, Michael, we talked about this morning, the name of Jesus changes everything. The name of Jesus changes everything. The name of Jesus changes everything when you fall in the parking lot, Beverly, and have an injury that just absolutely overwhelms you. Ginger, you, you experienced that a few weeks ago when you had that accident. And all of it we've been through, many of us have been through tragedy in our lives. The name of Jesus is the difference maker. When we speak his name and we practice his presence and we understand just how much he loves us. Oh, dear friends, I've come to see that name is so powerful. I received a compliment a couple of weeks ago. You remember when Pastor Jeff and Connie were here talking about the food ministry? They sat right back there and I noticed they had a big old smile on their face. They may be watching today. I hope they are because it just meant the world to me after we went downstairs to eat lunch and they continued to smile and talk about everything. And Jeff looked at me, and I've known Jeff for 30 years. He's a dear friend. He just looked at me and kind of took a little pause. And he said, you know what, Mark? He said, me and Connie were back there talking. He said, as soon as we walked into that church, 
she looked at me and she said, these people really love Jesus. <laughs> these people really love Jesus. Oh, my dear friends, it shows. It shows. Do you know how to make a pastor happy? When somebody says that of your church, when you hear that somebody from the outside who's never met you before walks in and the first thing they know about you is, these people love Jesus. Amen. Oh, dear friends, that's what he's trying to do in us. That's where he wants us to be. That's where he wants us to go. Dear friends, if you're watching on the internet and you're not satisfied with your relationship with Jesus, or if you feel like he's distant, just speak his name. Speak his name. Call upon his name and he will draw so near to you. Oh, how I pray that everyone who walks through these doors will feel that love. We love Jesus here. And we're not afraid to speak his name and use his name. I'm probably running just a little bit behind. I'm going to try to catch up a little bit. If I don't catch up, I'll preach to you next week. Amen? Amen. 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 I probably preached a full sermon already. Number two, Jesus is the successor. And I did that to keep the S's right. But what it means is Jesus is the heir of all things. God has given him everything that he had in this world. You see, Jesus has always been existed with God the Father. Perfect. The Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Jesus was manifested at times in the Old Testament in a human form. But on that night in Bethlehem that we're going to be celebrating here in a couple of months, Christmas is coming, and I love to celebrate it, when Jesus punctuated human history and he voluntarily stepped down off of his throne, he came down to our level because we could never get to him. But he came to us and he took on a body. He took on a constitution, a physical form. And you know what, dear friends? He's back in heaven, but he still has that same body. He is forever given a body. He asked the Lord, prepare for me a body, it tells us in prophecy, and I will go and I'll redeem those people. And our Redeemer lives and he is always going to be one that we can touch, one that we can feel. He is the firstborn from the dead, the Bible tells us. He has that spiritual body, that renewed body, that new man, one new man, the new Adam, he calls it, the new creation. He's the firstborn from the dead. It's that same body he's going to give us very, very soon. We're going to see it sooner than we think. And it doesn't matter. We won't be falling anymore, ladies. We won't be having a, a, a back problems. We won't be having all these issues that we have physically. We won't be angry anymore. We won't be lonely anymore because we will be like him. We'll see him as he is and he will present us to the Father, blameless, giving us a new body. Dear friends, I want you to understand he is the successor. He will inherit all things. He's even in process now of this world becoming the kingdoms of the Lord in Christ. Listen to what Colossians 1 says. Oh, this is a powerful scripture and it speaks directly to what we're talking about here in Hebrews. Colossians 1.15, the Son, there's that word again, the Son is the image of the invisible God. He's the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and things on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. It all belongs to him. And he is our friend. You know, you can name drop sometimes and say, well, I know the king, I know the governor, I know the, the mayor, I may know the movie star, I may know somebody a millionaire, I may know Donald Trump, or I may know Jeff Bezos, I may know somebody who's got all kind of power, lots of money. Dear friends, I know Jesus. You know Jesus. There is no greater name. There is no greater power. There is no greater authority. He is the heir of all things. I think I want to cut off with this, but I did want to, this is too good to miss. This week, I love the Queen of England. I miss her so bad. I really do. Now, y'all may think I'm crazy, but I love the monarchy. I love the all the regal stuff. I'm part, I'm actually mostly Scottish, 49% Scottish according to my DNA. But I've never been to the old country, but I hope to go one of these days. What you grinning about? You are too. Yeah, she's more English, so she's we're English and Scottish. We're gonna go one of these days, aren't we? I'd love to go. We watched that uh, series on Netflix called The Crown. Have anybody watched that? Where it goes back and it, it really a really good historical adaptation of the life of Queen Elizabeth. When she was 25 years old, she was forced into that role. She never thought she'd be queen. She wasn't supposed to be queen, but circumstances made her queen. What a lady of grace. What a lady of dignity. What a lady of just Christian values. She loved the Lord with all of her heart. And it was depicted in that series, but I said, well, maybe they 
maybe they didn't get that exactly right, but I've done some research. Billy Graham would visit with her often. He, he stayed at Buckingham Palace. He and his wife were invited there several times. And he said she was a lover of Jesus. He said she loved Jesus with all her heart. And she was a wonderful Christian woman. Uh, but the queen just meant the world to all of us. The whole world loved Queen Elizabeth. But now there's her son. Her son, Prince Charles. We've been watching him all her life. Everybody knew that one day he, this day would come. He was getting older and older. He's 73 now. I think he's about to be 74. Finally, his day came to be the king. And you know what? He has accepted it with the same grace that you would expect. And he's an imperfect man. This is an imperfect example of sonship and of succession. But this week, it's all been on our heart and on our mind. The perfect example is God the Father and Jesus. Jesus Christ is the eternal son. He has been prepared for this. He has been given this. He's been given a name that is above all names. He is coexistent with the Father, has been in eternity. But since that day he came to this earth and he took on a body, he has accepted the role of King of kings and Lord of lords. He's the one who leads us. He's the one who guides us. He's the one who directs us. He gave up everything to come to this earth and he has been given the kingdom. Dear friends, He is coming again and He is coming on a white horse to destroy the enemies of God with 10,000 of His saints, like we said a couple of weeks ago. 10,000 upon 10,000. We're going to be right there with Him. We're going to join in that inheritance of God that has come to Jesus Christ. I read this this morning and I had to actually write it into my sermon because I found it interesting. So saw an article on Fox News that said Prince Charles, now King Charles III, had to just yesterday legally and formally sign a paper that surrendered his hereditary revenues because the king has to put everything away so he can be the king. Now they're going to take good care of him. They're going to give him a very, very generous allotment, a very generous way to live. But he had to surrender his rights to $14 billion in estate money that his family owns. He had to give that up. He had to give up those rights and he had to put it away to serve his country. And I saw, once again, it's very imperfect. It's very imperfect. I don't even know where Charles stands as far as Jesus, but I know his mama loved Jesus. But when I look at this wonderful example in the worldly sense, I see the sense that Jesus had to give up his own attributes for a time. He had to give up his glory. He was seated in glory in heaven with the Father. And he said, I'll go. Lord, use me. Father, use me as the language you're going to speak to my people. I long to be with my people. I want to be one of them. I want to be their high priest. I want to die for them. I want to redeem them. I want to show them that you love them eternally. Ephesians 1.21. We read it a few weeks ago. We preached on it. God has placed him far above all rule and authority, in power and dominion, and has given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven, of things in earth, of things under the earth. And that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's all for his glory. It's all about Jesus. It's all what he has done. I'll just go through these items in the bulletin and let you read them on your own. And I may come back to some of them next week. Jesus is seated at the right hand of God the Father. We haven't done the Apostles' Creed today. We may do that in just a moment as an illustration of this sermon. There's coming a day when He will consummate the ages, when things will be over. He will destroy the enemies of God. Death will forever be defeated for all His people. He will be crowned King of kings and Lord of lords. That's another thing I wanted to mention. We talked about in the song. We can't crown Jesus until we get there. When I first think about that, I say, well, Jesus, you're already king. You're seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. You're coming back. How could you be more of a king or how could you be more crowned? But there's coming a day. There is coming a day. Right now, the Bible says prophetically that his enemies are being made his footstool. The Bible tells us that all things are being placed under his feet. And that is a present tense. That's happening now. It's not going to happen later. It didn't happen back then. It's happening right now. As this world comes to him, as we as Christians walk this earth and as we pray and as we seek his face and we believe that God is using us and we use we ask God to use us as salt and light in this world, all things are coming in subjection to him. There's coming a day when his enemies will be destroyed and the earth will be his and his glory will reign on this earth forever. Dear friends, I want you to understand it is glorious. Jesus is coming again. Jesus reigns right here and now. But there's coming a day 
There is coming a day when we can't crown Jesus until we all get there. There's coming that coronation day, the marriage supper of the Lamb. Angels will stand around and rejoice when the redeemed children of God will gather around His throne and worship the Lamb in all of His glory. Does that get anybody excited here today? Amen. I guess it's about time I better hush. and We better uh, save some for next week. So y'all, y'all thank God with me and let's just pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much, God. I get so excited when I talk about the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we're just mere mortals. We're sinful people, Lord. We, we mess up. We, get, we make mistakes, Lord. We fall. And Lord, you told us in the book of Jude that you're able to keep us from stumbling. Lord, I want to be so close to you that you can just grab me when I start to stumble, Lord. Lord, I thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives. I thank you for the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, I pray that we would understand the power and the authority and the glory in that name, that we would never, ever be shy about using it, and that everyone who comes in this church would say the same thing that our dear friend said a couple of weeks ago. These people really love Jesus. Oh, we do, Lord. Love him right now with me. Just say, Lord, I love you. I bless you. I thank you. I praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. been given lord i pray your blessings your grace and your mercy upon us lord thank you for willing servants who obey your word lord and i thank you for the promise that you're going to pour out a blessing so powerful and so overwhelming that we just feel like it's going to just 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 inundate us lord i thank you so much that your word is true lord i speak very special blessings on those who give lord and i thank you that our needs are met according to your riches and glory in christ jesus blessed be your name lord in Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Praise God.
and in our hearts. Lord, we go forth into a lost and dying world, and we speak the name of Jesus. Stand up, United Methodist Church. You are released in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm going to turn off the internet real quick. Internet people, we love you. God bless you. No. No. No.